The United States nuclear stockpile is arguably the most important part of the country's national security, but the government stopped testing nuclear weapons here in 1992. Instead, the government puts its faith in a handful of top-notch science facilities, like Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, that maintain the nuclear stockpile and test it, but without explosions. How do you maintain and test the American nuclear stockpile without exploding the weapons? Scripps News was granted access to Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California, where world-renowned physicists use supercomputers to perform complex laser experiments in the lab's national ignition facility, mimicking the conditions of a nuclear bomb going off. Kim Udell, a physicist by training and the director of this laboratory, balances the scientific and security guarantees that this facility provides the country. We're kind of living in a tenuous moment geopolitically throughout the world. The possibility of nuclear war has been broached by Putin in Russia a few times recently. How does that make you think about maintaining the nuclear stockpile. The world has changed in ways over the last decade that we did not anticipate. In spectacular ways, uh, China's entry onto the scene as not just an economic player, but really a strategic challenge has really complicated matters. Uh, and this emerging axis of cooperation between Russia, China, Iran, North Korea is a very interesting geopolitical um, mix I didn't anticipate. We need to be much fleeter afoot. We need to be able to adapt and change as rapidly as the environment is changing. And we need to be more anticipatory. So part of our job is not to just wait, see, you know, what does the government need based on today's geopolitical environment? It's to lay the foundations that will allow us to respond to what the government needs 10 years hence. Part of tackling national security challenges a decade away involves conducting supercharged, complex experiments today. One crucial building block is the assembly of the target that all the laser energy is focused on, the point of the reaction. Michael Staterman oversees this part of the process, which requires a hyper-clean work environment. You're looking at the target fabrication clean room. So huge amounts of energy go into this. Yes, yeah, so three football fields of laser are focused onto this small part here. This behind me is the target assembly area. This is one of many steps in the experiment process, and we are actually gonna get suited up and go inside to see up close what everyone in this area is working on. This is full in the clean room now. The clean room has two areas. So why don't we walk from here on to the line where the work is being done. Building nearby, Tayeb Suratwala oversees another part of the process, repairing the optics, which are large, carefully designed crystal and glass squares. They help channel and concentrate laser energy onto the tiny point in the fusion target during experiments. The National Ignition Facility can't function without these optics. We're leading the world in these optical components grinding, polishing, cleaning, laser damage science. Is there anyone else in the world that is doing this kind of optics repair? Um, as far as we know, no. The target fabrication and optics repair process come together in Lawrence Livermore's vast National Ignition Facility. This enormous building, three football fields in length, uses 192 lasers to beam energy at incredibly high speeds and temperatures into that tiny peppercorn-sized target. The result? A controlled thermonuclear reaction. How does the work here contribute to the national security of the United States? We can test components for systems that might go into space or into critical military systems and understand how they respond to radiation environments. We can develop new materials that are required for very uh, harsh environments and test them in those exact conditions here. 
We're also pushing the frontiers of science here. All of the hard work of this lab over the course of decades came to fruition in the middle of the night in December 2022 when the facility achieved ignition, the moment when a fusion reaction creates or releases more energy than is put into it. What was your reaction when you heard that this laboratory reached ignition? Uh, initially, sort of stunned disbelief. It was the first time in human history that this occurred in a lab. That sent an enormous signal into the world, not just the scientific community, but into the security community about what the capabilities of the United States really are in this realm. Budell is also advocating for her facility, which has a $3 billion annual budget, during a moment when the Trump administration is reportedly firing and offering buyouts to experts at the National Nuclear Security Administration. That agency, while semi-autonomous, does own the physical infrastructure of this lab. Right now there's an effort in Washington to downsize the federal government, to slash budgets and programs. How would something like that impact the work that you do here, this laboratory. We're doing work here today for which I predict 10 years from now we'll find unique uses that we don't imagine. And that's part of the reason you want this long-term commitment. So that is very concerning to me. Support for the research enterprise for me is a critical element of what has made the United States a leading nation and a great nation over time. And, and it would be tragic to lose those underpinnings. There has been a renewed conversation about the merits of explosive nuclear testing under the new administration. But in a Senate hearing this week, Trump's nominee to lead the National Nuclear Security Administration said that he would not advise that explosive testing. Instead, saying the government should continue to rely on the science. Liz Landers, Scripps News Group, Washington.